In this experiment, we looked at the ability of peas to produce carbon dioxide. Before you started your experiment, your instructor added water to the peas so that the peas would undergo what's known as germination. This is a period of growth after a period of dormancy. Once the peas were ready, we then filled two Erlenmeyer flasks up, each of them halfway, with germinated peas. At this point in time, one of these sets of peas was ready to go, while the other one needed to be boiled. We boiled the peas for five minutes, and at the end of the boiling period, we're ready to assemble our respiration apparatuses. The peas are placed into the Erlenmeyer flasks, and thistle tubes along with rubber stoppers are attached to them. Additionally, rubber tubing is run from the apparatus into a test tube filled with water. This creates a sealed environment. In this environment, the peas will utilize any oxygen that's present to perform respiration and ultimately produce carbon dioxide, if they're capable of doing so. At the end of the 40-minute incubation period, we carefully remove the rubber tubing from the test tube, capping it as we do so to maintain the internal environment of the apparatus. We dump the water out and replace it with phenol red, which will allow us to determine if any carbon dioxide was produced in the apparatus. Once we've replaced the water in each test tube with phenol red, we're now ready to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. We do so by filling a beaker with 100 milliliters of water, removing the rubber stopper from the end of the thistle tube, and pouring the water into each apparatus. We'll start with one of these two apparatuses, and as I pour the water into the apparatus, you'll notice the phenol red bubbling. If carbon dioxide is present, the phenol red should change color from red to a yellow, orangish, or goldish color. If, however, carbon dioxide is not present, then the phenol red should remain, for the most part, reddish in color, as this one does. I again refill the beaker for the second apparatus, again remove the rubber stopper from the thistle tube, and pour the water into the apparatus. As I do, the phenol red begins to bubble, and as you will notice here, there's a distinct color change from red to a yellowish color, denoting that carbon dioxide indeed was present in this particular apparatus. And I will now remove the rubber tubing from each of these test tubes and hold them up so that you can see the distinct difference between a positive and negative result in terms of carbon dioxide production.